So what's the difference between this, this, and this? And when would you use each one? Hey, this is Damien from Southpaw Designs, and today we're gonna to take a deep dive into routers, but more specifically, router bits. We're gonna cover some of the key uses of different types of router bits and CNC bits. We're gonna talk about what each type does, when to use it, and how to use it properly, and what to avoid. We're gonna start talking about conventional router bits for just a couple of minutes, but then the majority of this video is gonna focus on CNC bits. To begin with, when you buy a conventional router, uh, they're gonna come in two typical models. One could be a palm router, while the other could be a plunge router. Now, a trim router is more commonly used for roundovers, chamfers, along the edges of your workpieces, whereas a plunge router is more commonly used to plunge down into a workpiece and kind of work from the inside. In my shop, I use my trim router all the time. I don't use a plunge router that often. I just don't have the need for it. Now let's talk about the different types of bits that a typical uh, trim router or plunge router may use. Now chamfer and roundover and molding bits will typically look like this. They will usually have a bearing on the bit itself, now the purpose of this bearing is to keep your router bit uh, right there along the edge of your work surface so that you can get a straight line or that it follows the contour of your workpiece. Now these molding bits come in a variety of different shapes and sizes to achieve several different types of designs on the molding or the edges of a workpiece, such as a coffee table. Next you'll have flush cut bits. Now flush cut bits are very handy for use, especially with a plunge router because you can make dados and rabbits uh, to create channels within your workpiece. There's a variety of different uses for them, but this is one of the most common. You'll notice that these straight bits don't have a bearing on them, so you do need some way of keeping your router straight when you're working with it. And then you have what I like to call utility bits, such as this keyhole bit, which is used to put a keyhole slot in the back of a workpiece, especially a clock or a picture frame. You simply plunge the bit down into the workpiece and then you drag it in a straight line. Uh, then you turn it off and then back it back out and you have a keyhole, which is great for being able to place a slot in the back so that you can hang it on a nail or screw. Then you have other specialty or utility bits, such as this dovetail bit. Honestly, I don't do dovetails. I've never used this bit, but it's handy to have. Now, if you're looking to purchase a router or router bit set, uh, normally I'm the buy once, cry once kind of a guy. Uh, put money into something that you know is gonna last. But when it comes to something like router bits, you might not know what you're gonna use from time to time. So I encourage you to buy something like a cheap set that you can find online or at your local home center like Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, and then the ones that get worn out and broken, well, those are the ones that you actually use more often. So that's where you put the money into buying those expensive bits. Hey, at this point, I do want to remind you that the lifeblood of this channel is subscriptions. So if you feel that I've earned it, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button down below and turn on notifications if you like this type of content. All right, now let's change gears and talk about CNC bits. Uh, if you come to this channel often, you know that I'm probably best known as a CNC woodworker. And if you're new here and you don't know it, well, there you go. Now for my CNC and spindle of choice, I use the uh, Onefinity Woodworker X50. Actually, it's the Elite upgrade that I upgraded to probably a year or so ago. And I use a Pone CNC air-cooled spindle. Now I love this equipment and it's allowed me to uh, turn this wood shop into a very profitable shop. So let's dig in and let's talk about some of the different types of CNC bits that you're going to use. First of all, we have what are known as an upcut and a downcut bit. Those are the most basic bits that you're gonna find with a CNC. These are also known as end mill bits. Now a downcut bit is called a downcut bit because the rotation of the bit itself pushes your sawdust and material down into the workpiece. What this gives you is this gives you a good top surface, but it's gonna give you a rough bottom surface. As you can see in this sample right here, we are using a downcut bit. So you'll notice it's nice and clean uh, on the top surface. And actually it's pretty clean on the bottom surface as well. But if we were to do a bigger pocket, you would probably notice that there's some burrs and some fur down on that bottom surface that needs to be cleared out. Next, we have an upcut bit. 
An upcut bit is more commonly used for removing material because it will pull your sawdust and material up and that gives you a better bottom surface, but you will find that you've got more burrs and fur on the top surface that will need to be cleaned out. Now I do have links to all these bits down in the description, so if you wanna check any out, just click on those links and give them a shot. Also, you'll notice that you have different size bits. Now the most common bit that I'm gonna use in my shop is a quarter of an inch bit. But if you need those tighter corners or you need a smaller cut, then uh, you can also get an eighth of an inch bit. You've gotta be careful with these because obviously being smaller, they're more prone to breaking, so just be careful with them. I typically buy them in bulk because I have broken off quite a few. And next we have what's called a compression bit. Now a compression bit is a combination of both an upcut and a downcut bit. Now the way that a compression bit works is that at the top of the bit, and I'm saying the top as if it were actually sitting inside my spindle, the top of the bit is a downcut bit. So you're gonna get a nice clean top surface, but the very tip of the bit becomes an upcut bit. So you get a nice clean bottom surface as well. Now you do wanna make sure that you have good uh, dust and debris removal when you're using a compression bit because uh, that sawdust can kind of collect uh, in that area and you wanna make sure that you don't have any fires or have any smoke. And before we finish up talking about end mills, let's talk about this bad boy right here. This is known as the Beast and it's sold by Garrett at IDC Woodcraft. Now I have no affiliation with IDC Woodcraft, but I do really love this bit. This bit allows you to remove a large amount of material in a very short period of time, as you can see right here. Now I don't have any official affiliate relationship with Garrett or IDC Woodcraft, but I am gonna put a link to this particular bit down in the description because it is a very handy uh, bit to have in your arsenal. All right, next, let's talk about V-bits. V-bits come in a variety of different angles, and for my shop, I typically keep three on hand. I have a 15 degree V-bit, I've got a 60 degree V-bit, and I have a 90 degree V-bit. So let's go ahead and run some tests on these and we'll see how they actually perform. You'll notice that with the 90 degree V-bit, it's gonna hog out a large amount of material in a short period of time. Even though you might not think it could do it, it can make tight corners, although it doesn't do a, an incredible job, as you can see right here on the letter S. Next, we have our 60 degree V-bit. This is probably the one that I use more than any other in my shop. It's a good utility bit. It can get some tight corners, especially in lettering. And so this is one that I highly recommend that you have. And then we have the 15 degree V-bit. Now this 15 degree is also very handy because it can create some very fine detail, but you've gotta be careful with it because these are kind of brittle uh, because of the fact that they are so small and pointed. And also if you go too deep with a 15 or a 20 degree V-bit, then your workpiece can splinter and break off. So you really have to be careful when using a 15 or 20 degree V-bit uh, in your woodworking project. And next, let's talk about this bad boy. Now this is a surfacing bit. Now surfacing bits are great because you can use it to flatten a piece of material. Now if you're doing that, be very careful because if you do like I do and you screw your workpiece down to your spoil board, uh, you wanna make sure that it does not hit those screws. So what I typically do is I'll use a Forstner bit to place a pretty large countersink so that I can screw those uh, screws well beneath the surface in the area that I would actually be cutting. I like this particular surfacing bit the best because it has removable blades. Now, not only are they removable, but they actually have four blades on each blade. So these can last you a long time. Actually, I'm noticing that some of these have already started to chip off. So it's probably about time to replace these blades. So I don't have to throw away the entire bit. I can just replace the blades as they wear out. Right, next, let's talk about bowl bits. Bowl bits come in a variety of different sizes. Um, and this is the bowl bit that I prefer to use. Bowl bits are very handy when you're creating items such as, obviously, bowls, uh, serving trays, coasters, that kind of thing, because it gives a nice tapered edge around the edge of your workpiece. And thanks for sticking around to the end. And since you're still here, check out this video. I think it's going to be right up here, which is a uh, review of my Pwn CNC spindle. And we also talk a little bit about the difference between a palm router versus a spindle for your CNC.